Hey guys, I'm Theobald Hedman, and you're watching Southern Ingenuity. In this video, I'll be making these small work holding clamps to use with the work holding table that I made for my dividing head in one of my previous videos. These clamps are the second in a series of tools and jigs that I'm making in preparation for an upcoming project. I'll be using this small piece of channel iron taken from an old security fence panel. I chose this material because of its size and its shape. It's small enough that it won't overcrowd the work area and its shape will provide the rigidity that's needed to securely clamp the work pieces into place. I cut four pieces two and a quarter inches long, four pieces four and a half inches long, and two pieces nine inches long. Then I use a five eighths inch end mill to lightly face the inside surface and square off the radius from the inside corners. This will allow for proper clearance and a flat surface for the knurled clamping knobs to engage. Next, I cut a 3 8 inch slot into each piece. This slot allows the clamp to be positioned at various angles and distances from the part, depending on the location of the part relative to the threaded clamping holes in the work table. Having clamps of different lengths and configurations gives more options when it comes to clamping parts of various shapes and sizes. The short and medium length clamps will have a height adjustment bolt on one end. This is so the back side of the clamp can be adjusted to the same height as the clamping surface of the workpiece. A 3 8 inch diameter hole is drilled into each of the clamps for the bolt to pass through. Well now I'm going to mill the ends down on the clamps that they're approximately about a 45 degree angle. So I need to find a way to set this up quickly to where it'll be about the same angle every time. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a piece of gusset material that I made for another project. I'm going to use that as my angle. So as I set it into the device, lay the clamp on it and it'll set it at the same angle every time. But now I also need to make sure that I come up to the same height every time so I don't have to keep adjusting the height of the table. So I'm going to use the second gusset as a stop there. Now I can slide the clamp up to this part and that'll set my angle and my distance. So I'm going to use C-clamp to hold that in position be a repeatable setup. Now none of the dimensions on these parts are critical at all. The angles being cut here are simply to give added clearance if needed for the cutting tool, or if the clamp has to be positioned on the part in a tight or a narrow location. When cutting the angles on these clamps, I simply eyeballed the height of the clamp relative to the top of the vise. Well now I'm going to weld a nut to the bottom side of each clamp to accommodate the adjustment bolt. I could have just tapped the threads directly into the clamp itself, but the material here is relatively thin and it would have only allowed for maybe one or two threads.
Now, it could probably go without saying, but these clamps are just intended to be used for light-duty machining operations. They aren't strong enough for operations where aggressive cuts or feeds are going to be used. I made them to work specifically with the work holding table shown in this clip. If you'd like to see how I made it, then be sure to click the link at the end of this video. In some of my future videos, I'll be using this setup to make a specialized jig for cutting a miniature sprocket and for cutting the sprocket itself. So if you'd like to see those videos, then be sure to subscribe and click the notifications bell. Now I'm not really sure how often I'll actually use these longer clamps, but I went ahead and made them anyway just so I'd have some more options for clamping if needed. I'm Theobald Hedman. Thanks for watching Southern Ingenuity.